Four goals, two assists for the preseason player of the year, Megan Tyrell. Meanwhile, Emily Sterling, the preseason goalie of the year with just three saves on 10 shots on goal, a 30% save rate for a goalie who had the second highest save rate in all of women's college lacrosse a season ago. 7-5 Orange just over a minute into the second quarter. Well, maybe that's because she didn't play Syracuse last year. That's true. First trip to the Dome for Maryland in five years. First matchup between these two since 2020. Mashevsky and Smith once again from the draw circle. A violation, and it goes against Mashevsky. Or at least originally. But now the officials are going to confer on the far side of the field, Ethan. Goodell got pushed down on the edge of the circle on the right side by Edmondson. Corey Edmondson, the number one recruit in the nation, getting playing time for the number two team in the country. Those two things would seem to make sense, mm -hmm. but maybe a little over physical on that draw. Maryland with the best recruiting class in the country this season as the referees still trying to figure out what happened on that draw between Mascheski and Shannon Smith. Originally, it was ruled a violation on Mascheski, and it was pointing for Maryland possession moving left to right. And now it's going the other way. After a long conversation between officials, Syracuse is awarded possession, moving right to left with a two-goal lead. Mashevsky just holds it as a restart yet to begin. And she flips it left to Katie Goodale. The All-America honorable mention in the preseason. Races up the left alley. 30 yards away from Cage, now 20, before flipping behind to Emma Tyra. She scored three goals in her first game back from a midseason torn ACL a year ago. 20 yards straight away, it's Nat Smith who pushes it to the far wing for Adamson. Back to Smith. Cockrell on the left wing. Just over two minutes into the second quarter, 7-5 Syracuse over Maryland in this top five showdown. Emma Tyrell passes left, Carney. Straight away, 15 yards out. Dancing on the left wing, tries to spin right, but can't. Now gives it up to Emma Ward. Straight away, 15 yards out. Nat Smith on the left wing, it's Cockrell. Orange into the three-woman weave. 15 yards away from Cage. Cockrell with a sidewinder from 10 yards away. Buries her first goal back from injury. Blink and you miss it. Back-to-back -back goals for the Orange to start the second quarter. And SU leads 8-5. As my good friend Joe Puccio would say, that was a righty ripper, Ian. And boy, did Sierra Cockrell rip that right into the top right corner. Stings past Emily Sterling, an impressive showing of power from the Syracuse midfielder. Well, you talk about power. Sierra Cockrell, she used to play football. She used to wrestle back in the day. She's somebody who hates the fact that in women's lacrosse you can't be more physical than you can be. This is someone whose brother played football in Maryland as a linebacker. She's someone who embraces the physicality of the game, and she's got three points in just her second game back from a torn ACL a year ago. Big hugs from Kayla Trainer on the sideline. That has to feel good if you're Sierra Kako. Get that monkey off your back that you finally find the back of the net, and it gives your team a three-goal lead in the process. 8-5 Orange just over two minutes into the second quarter. Maryland went on a big run to end the first, and Syracuse coming right out of the gates and responding with two unanswered in the second. Mascheski and Smith once more from the draw circle where the Orange have a 10-4 advantage. Ball flipped to the near side of the field, past Katie Goodale, still loose, and finally a scrum of players win it for Maryland, who moves it left to right, and they're all black unis. Nobody's claimed possession on the left wing yet, finally scooped up for Maryland. And the stick of Corey Edmondson, who Ethan just mentioned, the number one recruit in the country. Now on the right wing, it's Ahern. Behind the cage, Clevenger. Defended by Goodale. Dodging left, near side GLE. Back in front, Ahern. Maryland moving with pace, far side GLE. Back in front to Edmondson. Near side GLE, it's Libby May. Behind the cage, Clevenger dodges right on Chevery. A couple of half spins. Attacking the left side of a crease. Tries to fire a shot in low, but it's stopped by Schweitzer. Water straight bagels, I think, is... A close second oh, to really? the New York yeah. City Bagel oh. Trail. Wow. But wow. Ian Nicholas, he's in studio. Ian, what's cooking in sports? 
Guys, you got me hungry over here at the wall. But look, there's a bagel in Syracuse women's lacrosse's record. 11 and bagel, 11 and 0. And they've got a game going on right now. Find out who they play and what the score is when we come right back. It's the final countdown for Syracuse men's basketball. Welcome into sports. I'm Ian Nicholas. The last few hours of SU season have been, well, ugly. Jim Beheim's crew has lost three straight by 17 or more points for the first time in over 60 years. The Cuse's two-game road trip last week provided a roadmap on how to peel the orange, shoot the three. Syracuse gave up over 90 points at both Clemson and Pittsburgh. The Tigers and Panthers roared from downtown, drilling 30 triples at a 39% clip. There's just two regular season contests left to turn things around, but Bayheim thinks it can be done. Played pretty good basketball overall. I think we're just too young to be consistent and to be good on the defensive end. It's just a struggle there for us, but I think we've done a lot of I'm, I'm pretty happy with what, what this team's done, and I think we'll finish strong. Someone who is finishing strong for Syracuse is Judah Mintz. The freshman averaged a team high 19.5 points, 3.5 assists, and shot 58% from the field last week. As a result, the point guard earned his fifth ACC Rookie of the Week honor. Mintz has a chance to stay hot against 12-17 and 17 Georgia Tech tonight in the Dome at 7. To the turf, Syracuse women's lacrosse is 1-0 in ACC play and 1-0 on the road after a 12-goal thrashing at Pittsburgh Saturday. Kayla Trainer's crew is a perfect 4-0 for the third consecutive year, but regardless, SU sits behind number one North Carolina in the national rankings for the second week straight. The Cuse aims to stay spotless back in the 3-1-5 against UAlbany. Good news, the Orange are 15-0 all-time when facing the Great Danes. UAlbany's led by Syracuse legend Katie Rowan. The six-year head coach became the first SU women's lacrosse player to have her jersey retired last season. Opening draw for this year's showdown is tomorrow at 4. Syracuse and Georgetown first met in 1930, but the bitterness between these two wouldn't form for a half century. In 1979, SU and G-Town were two of the seven founding members of the Big East. Their first in-conference showdown on February 13, 1980 changed everything. This date marked the then Orangemen's last inside Manley Fieldhouse. The Cuse had won its previous 57 games at home. Down 15 with 14 minutes to go, the Hoyas rallied to upset the second-ranked Orangemen 52-50. Afterwards, Georgetown coach John Thompson twisted the knife with six infamous words. Manley Fieldhouse is officially closed. As a door closed, another opened to one of the most contentious rivalries in the sport's history. Michael Graham's meltdown at 84. Pearl Washington's game winner a year later. Big John's three techs in an ejection in 1990. It was always a must-watch, and it defined what the old Big East was. Syracuse hated Patrick Ewing. Georgetown hated Jerry McNamara. Funny enough, they're coaching for their alma maters today. Even so, Thompson said, quote, I always respected their program in Jim Beheim. Never could have admitted it, never would have admitted it, and I'd say you're lying if you said I said it. Funny enough, Alicia will get Jack. She's been at SU now for one season as the head coach. She was an SU assistant coach from 1993 to 2000, but before that, she actually donned the maroon and gold. She was a Boston College assistant from 91 to 93, 1991 to 93, that is. Five on the floor for SU, and they're all white uniforms and orange lettering are Wooly, Fair, Lewis, Wood, and Rice. And Ian, you know what they say, talking about Coach Jack's time in BC? You haven't lived if you haven't been to Chestnut Hill. Well, I've been there, and you know, I lived before, and I've lived after. Mare, top of the arc for the Eagles. Drives off the screen right to the hoop. Tried to feed Gokdang, but all over her like a defensive back was Lewis, who batted it to the baseline, but it stays with Boston College. Attacking the right basket down 62-52. And Gokdang, the inbound, pressured by Wolf. Flings it to the left wing for Todd. Rice with her hands in the air. McGee catches it at the foul line, feeds it down low to Gokdang, under the hoop, and she's fouled. Gokdang continues to be a force. And now she tries to be a force from the foul line. Her Kyra first, Wood with the foul. Her first trip to the charity stripe today, not a good free throw shooter, only 53%. Whistles blow as BC looking to make some substitutions. The junior, JoJo Lacey, comes into the ball game, and Kaina Mare with four fouls is going to come out despite the Eagles down 10 points with seven minutes to go. Gokdang dribbles three times into the hardwood, and her first free throw has a funny release, but it goes in. 
SU, a nine point lead, 62-53. Doc Dang ready for free throw number two. Off the back iron, rolls multiple times around and in. That's two for two, Trut. That's one heck of a bounce. Lucky indeed. 62-54, SU with the lead, attacking a left basket. On the right wing, Woolley. Defended by Todd, top of the arc, Lewis. Fakes a pass left, now back right to Woolley. Fair, top of the key, left corner, Rice. Drives baseline on Todd, under the hoop. Trapped, three BC players around the ball, and finally scooping it up is Gokden. Rice out of control. Todd up the near side, she's fouled in transition by Georgia Woolley. The Buffalo transfer commits her second foul of the game, and coming right into the ball game is Tyena Mare. So I think they have a strategy. I think Coach Mack wants to keep Mare on offense and maybe not play her on defense. And we've seen Ava McGee, the player she was subbed out for, hustle quite a lot. Mare wide open on the left wing for three, but she misses badly off to the right. Rice snatches the board on the near block and works it right to left for Syracuse, 62-54 SU. Woolley on the move, on the near block, defended by Lacey. Rice on the left wing, right shoulder is shoved into Mare. A high finish off the top of the backboard misses. Out to Fair, top of the key for three. Bucket is in. The Asia Fair's had a tough game, but she comes up with a tough three. And it's 65-54 SU, six minutes to go. Mare swings to the left corner. Van Timmeren drives baseline, and she's hacked under the hoop. It's actually going to be a jump ball and goes the other way. What a great defensive effort from Elena Rice and Kyra Wood on that closeout. We've hit taco time, by the way. Now that SU has 65 points. The Asia Fair. She turned it on when the tacos were within reach. Rice dribbles it up the floor. Fair claps forward and gets it on the right wing. Top of the arc, Wood. Swings left, Woolley. Defended by Daly. Rice, top of the key, spins around, feeds right to Fair, off the ball foul in an illegal screen on Syracuse. Goes against Kyra Wood. That's a turnover, and you guessed it, another offensive possession for BC, checking right back into the ball game. Tyena Mare in place of Ali Van Timmeren. The next time you watch or listen to Syracuse Women's Across, you'll have to have a number one associated to it. The number one team in the land takes on Stony Brook tonight. But before that, we had to catch up with Kayla Trainer on the Z89 Coaches Report. Coach, I know there's a lot of season left, but only the second time in program history Syracuse has been ranked number one. What does it mean to you and this entire program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, girls are definitely working really hard, and they've found a lot of success so far this season. But... Uh, we're really focused on just one game at a time and you know you can't get too ahead of yourself especially when we play the schedule that we do so big one for us tomorrow night and um, you know we're looking forward to it. It's a tough schedule six of your final seven opponents either ranked or just outside the rankings you know the last time you guys were ranked number one and I know it's a topic of conversation you've heard plenty of was when you were on the team back in 2014 mm -hmm. do you remember when you guys were number one in the nation was there any added pressure any messages the coaches talk with you guys about or anything that went through your head when you as a player were a number one team of the nation? I actually did not know that so um <laughs> No, I think it's just like you come here because you want to be the best team in the country and Syracuse is always a contender for that. So it's something that was a decision in why these players came and chose to play here at Syracuse and wear orange. So, no, I don't think it's it's something that scares them or frightens them. It's something that it's just a part of playing at a top school and it's something that you know we're embracing and just trying to focus like i said one game at a time z89 coaches report alongside kayla trainer team was focused over spring break with two big wins over top teams in loyola and duke let's start with that loyola game it was your closest game since that northwestern win early on in a year and you guys didn't score in the third quarter loyola was able to clamp down defensively but in the fourth quarter you guys came roaring back what was the big difference from quarter number three to quarter number four yeah we had a tough third quarter you know, it's something that was kind of continuous, which is what I loved about Duke is that we had, you know, probably our best third quarter in a long time. So, you know, we didn't play well in the third quarter against Loyola, but I just loved that the team had so much belief and confidence to bounce back and make all the plays that we needed to make in order to win that game. And, um, you know, so just really proud of my players, really impressed by them. Not every win is a clean win. It was a tough game. Loyola played us great, but it's, it's really nice to walk away with a win. 